All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott from Rankin Technical College. We're going over the online PDF of App Inventor 2 Create Your Own Android Apps by Wolber, Abelson, Spurtis, and Looney. We're almost through Chapter 9, and we just started talking about recursion, and the author does a little thing here starting on page 161 where he steps through a scenario here. So this is what we're going to do. So the author says, to get a better idea, let's step through what happens if the user plays three notes, one, three, and six, and then presses the play button. First, the play button dot click starts running because the length of the list notes is three, which is greater than zero, count is set to one. So playback note is called. The first time it's called, count will be one. All right, so it's within range. So the source will be set to the first item in the notes, which is one dot wave, okay? It'll call play, so it'll play that note. Count is less than the length of the note, so it's incremented and called again. So you see it's calling itself. And what it's, for lack of better words, it's parroting what the user just did. The user pressed three notes, the one, the three, and then the six. And it's going through and doing the same thing, the one, the three, and then the six. And again, as the author says, although recursion is powerful, it can be dangerous. All right, it can actually end up taking more time instead of less as it's supposed to do. Plus, you've got the problem that I mentioned to you before with um, trying to get in or accidentally getting into an infinite loop. Although the recursion is correct, there is a different problem with the preceding example. Almost no time passes between one call to sound not play and the next, so each note is interrupted by the next note except for the last one. So in other words, only the last one will play. To get around this, we need to implement a delay between calls to playback note, and that's what they talk about next. So the author says we will implement the delay by setting the timer on the clock to the amount of time between the current note and the next note. For example, if the next note is played three seconds after the first one, there will be a clock time interval of 3,000, which would mean the same thing. All right, so make the changes to the body of the if block and play note and create and fill in the clock one event handler. All right, so this is what we want to do. We'll do this, and then they explain how that works, and then that's really pretty much it for the chapter. So again, let's blow this up. It's pretty much everything. So we want to get back into our playback note. I believe we can collapse this, which is pretty much already collapsed, and we can collapse this as well. You can see that probably from all the programs that we've done thus far, this is probably at least amongst the most complex because it's got the most components in it. And to be honest with you, this isn't even really a very complex example. So you can see that as what you're trying to do gets more and more complex, you're going to end up with more and more blocks. All right. So let's get back in here. We need the clock timer, which I don't think we have in here right now. So let's put that in. Looking in here and I don't see it. And for that, we want to set the clock timer enabled to false. And we want to call playback note. I believe that was everything. Yes. All right. So let's take a look on here and see if I've missed anything. So set the sound source. That looks correct. Call sound play if it's less than or equal to this. Right. I'll 
okay, so we want to put in this block in here right now, which looks like it's brand new. With the global count, global clock plus one, and the timer enabled, we already... So I guess we're doing, we're going to do this without, without any uh, recursion, the way it looks, because we're doing it over here in the playback note, in the timer rather. All right. So I should be able to remove this. And we'll add our other code here. So we want to have the clock, the clock one timer enabled to true. That's going to be at the bottom one here, bottom part here. that done set the global count to the global count plus one we already have that so we have to do this set clock clock one timer interval two. and that will actually go That didn't work. It's got to go right after the then. So take these, move them down, put this in here, and then move these back. All right, so set the client clock one timer interval. We want to call the clock one duration. start they will both be select list items list very hard to read here so I'm just moving some stuff around on the screen all right so our first one is get global times and get global count Second one is get global times, also get global count. It looks like they're the same thing. Plus one. Okay. We want to do a plus one in here. So we need a plus. And that will be a global count plus one. And that 
that is it. All right. A lot of code in this one, probably the most code that we've had so far. All right. Now, what I have to do is I have to pause this, um, and I'll come back very, very shortly.